priority for the offlaners. So having that support that can engage, maybe you know that's where we are going to see, like say, the Bane just run in, um, give up his life to to let his team initiate. Yep, I, uh, I very much imagine that that's going to be the the case here. And over on the other side of the the coin, we've got two physical damage cores now with Monkushi rocking the Wind Ranger, mm -hmm. which is also a single target. I don't want to say physical burst here because you usually still see the the maelstroms come out, right? Yeah. But she certainly is a good mixed damage core. And you know what? The Mage Slayer can't hurt you. The Mage Slayer can't hit you. So the <laughs> evasion is very much a uh, an important part here. So normally we don't really see the wind run used actively, right? Like, okay, I'm uh, I'm wind run. No, you just keep that for when you're in a pickle and then you press it. But now it's actually going to be important to use it proactively to make sure that when those mage layers come out, you do not get hit and debuffed just when you activate your focus fire. Yeah, and again, if, if you look at the item build up here, I don't think Violent wants to be going to a nullifier too early on. Um, Nikki Cool, he might get one, but you're still looking at the Diffusal Blade, like you say, the Mage Slayer in there, maybe an, mm. an Aghanim Scepter first as well. So the, the nullifiers on the side of an Amiga, not high priority against this Wind Ranger, I, I don't think at least. The battle begins. No, I don't think so yet either. I, I don't, you know, it's, it's going to be Violent eventually, like, he can let go of the Mage Slayer idea mm -hmm. uh, since his Pango is going to go one for sure. May maybe his Hoodwink is going to experiment with one. Like, we've been doing that on ranged POS 4s, <laughs> even though the, <laughs> the Hoodwink seems like a little weird <laughs> pick for that. Yeah, um, like say, I, I did see Ari in all three games in the grand finals of the Western European Qualifiers for Bet Boom yesterday. He was building up that mage lane, you know, he was happy mm -hmm. to do it. Um, starting off with the Blightstone as well here on Hellscream, so he's looking for that extra harass out early on. Um, I'm interested to see how the uh, Mankushi Wind Ranger is going to do because I've talked about this on a few of the casts that I'm not really impressed with the Wind Ranger carry because, you know, like you said, single focus target damage um, in these team fights once you've thrown out your focus fire. Really, apart from Maelstrom procs, what else are you trying to throw out? But with them having the TA in here that can step into that carry role a little bit later on, you'll get the the Dragon Lance into the Blink, into the Desolator. I feel like it's a little bit more comfortable. Um, but how do you feel as I got caught monologue and Ake's going to be able to draw the first blood? <laughs> this is the thing, right? I, yeah. I've not been the cameraman for ages on this. So, okay, everybody watching, you're just going to have to bear with me for this first match while I get comfortable with this. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, that's all right. I, mi I miss it as well. But this is one <laughs> of the things with the Timbersaw, right? On first level, especially if you go to Whirling Death first and you don't have the... Uh, the reactive armor, you mm -hmm. are going to be very, very vulnerable to just getting spin down. Yeah, and this is a, another thing as well that I've seen Timbersaws completely ignore the reactive armor till around level 8, level 9, you're maxing out the um, Will and Death into the, uh, the Timber Chain and just not going for that damage, uh, excuse me, the damage reduction on the, the armor at all. Yeah, well, he's taking a level here. Okay, okay. Presumably just because he... Uh, He's realized that he can't get away with it. Yep. Always adapt to the situation at hand. And safety first. Yeah, you, you are right. Um, you know. Yeah, he just need help on. <laughs> I suppose that's the thing, right? That here, if he does try to go to the Timmy Chain, or oh, Nikki Cool taking right click damage from Chira, is it going to be off? No, Nikki Cool going to be able to get himself over to the water room, get the refill on that bottle here as well. So, no follow up. And I thought Chira might have carried on chasing, but does opt to go towards his own room himself. Yeah, I mean, the, look at the HP variance here already. Like, this is this is very much a win for Chira already. And he mm -hmm. doesn't have to press the issue yet. He can just keep on slowly, surely eking out this little bit of advantage that he just had. That's an empty bottle of Nikki Cool. No runes upcoming. Chira full bottle himself. This is excellent. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, Namiga, they did get another kill. They took down the line on the top lane now as well. Sweden Strong uh, did get taking down with Ake, he's pretty much out of mana now, uh, not a lot of life left here as well, so if they can set up, there's no hex here on Sweden Strong, but uh, Sweden Strong just can keep Ake right down on the mana, you know, if he keeps getting in range, getting that mana drain off, and those mangoes might not be able to pay off here for the Bane in the lane. Yeah, that's the thing with the Bane, isn't it? It's so heavy on the mana costs for these first couple of spells. <laughs> And you basically empty out your mana pool. And now, well, you did get two kills with it. You did get a bit of a, a level advantage in the lane here, but not even a last hit advantage. Cloud very much on par with Violent here, and they're shoving in the wave 
back very far too. So this is a... Uh, this one, even though there's two kills upcoming, this one might only be getting harder and harder for the side of the Mika here. Yeah, and it's going to be taking a lot for us damage coming out there as well. Um, how much do you like where the lane's sitting as well in the, the that top lane? Because I would have thought they would have looked to, to try and pull it back, you know, keep it as close to the Radiant Tier 1 as possible. But it feels like Cloud, he just feels comfortable sitting right close, right up to the Tier 1 tower on the side of the Dire. I mean, he's got the love in the reactive armor, right? Which probably means he's got a little bit of a different attitude now than you would when if you're completely skipping that. Yeah. And when you push the lane up like this, and your bottom lane is actually also pushed out decently far, you can actually rotate through the gate with your supports, right? Or even with your carry if you're uh, if you're gaming gladiator. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we might see some play on this, but it looks like on the bottom lane, they want to get Harassi themselves and respect to Monkushi. Stepping up. Hellscream actually gets dragged back with the neutral. God damn, stop it. Every time I try to talk about a different lane. Oh, no. <laughs> Sweden Strong bites the dust top lane. Did get the healing ward killed in the process, though, so yeah. that is pretty decent here. Means that Violent cannot continue to contest Cloud here. Cloud already with the Helm of Iron Will, he is not going to die anymore up here. He's basically fine, which means the Lion can rotate wherever he wants now. Yeah. Um, how much do you like this? Uh, that was another item I didn't talk about offline, as, uh, as well as the Vlad's going towards the Veil here um, into the Shivas very, very early on. But um, I know we are in a magic damage patch, so is this you know something that you're not too fussed? Mirror Lane, we might come back to that in a second now as well. The Acorn Shot comes through. Shira Jr., Blood Grenade, but it looks like he's going to be able to get himself out of the danger here. Hellscream, not going to be able to follow up on that. But uh, yeah, Veil, Power Spike, good thing, or mm -hmm. do you want that reduced just a little bit? Uh, I like that Veil's actually a thing again. It's a very... The fact that you can choose instead of like defending for yourself versus magic damage early, you can also empower the magic damage. I think it's a good mm -hmm. thing. Uh, it... Like, and the, the fact that it comes out way before the Mage Slayers do also really help. So in that, in that regard, I actually... Um, like as far as the dynamic between those two item goes, which uh, I th would bet the two most bought items in this match right now, um, <laughs> I actually think it's in an interesting place. Uh, the problem is that it's all about the magic damage slash magic reduction, and we don't really talk about physical or about disables or anything like that. Like yeah. it's those two are well balanced between the two of them, but it's very one dimensional. Like it's it's only a line. Okay. Um, we're we'll, in the middle of the line. Yeah. Oh, we might actually see, or we might actually see it on stream here as well. Hellscream. Gonna get really down low. It does TP in now as well. Sweet and strong. There's gonna be a really nice earth spike. The right click's coming out here. Shira Jr. Can he get this kill onto the Bane? It looks like they're gonna try and move themselves away. Even the Hoodwink gonna survive through this one now as well. Nikki Cool. Not level 6 just yet. Just waiting on a couple more creeps here. Shira Jr. already has those traps down. And Nikki Cool gonna just get that shield crash shield up. Moving himself away. So no kills coming out onto this one. But a bit of skirmishing coming out in the mid lane. And this is all the result of Chira Jr. getting an advantage early, right? He yeah. starts pressing the issue. The supports of Namiga have to show up, which in return necessitates the uh, the supports from Klim. Did you call him Klim Sanich? Yeah, Klim Sanich. I've been told the, okay. the four is the CH in um, Cyrillic. Sure. Cyrillic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the word I was looking for. It, it is, isn't it? Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks. Uh, yeah, and so, yeah, I, I get messages all the time, which really helpful, actually. You know, I'm not disparaging mm -hmm. them that people in Twitch, they, they, are, they, they want the pronunciations right, so I do get those DMs in uh, yeah. Twitch and Twitter that just say, hey, you know, it's pronounced that way. And, you know, I actually really like it because it really it does help me out as well. Exactly. I mean, I'm like, I'm that girl. I've been chasing people for three years going, <laughs> like, it's not Zayak, it's Zayats. So, <laughs> please, if I get it wrong, do do that to me as well. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. Um, it's it's just nice to have, you know. Like I say, it just it it shows people. You want to call people what they're called. Yeah. yeah. And basic respect. See top lane violent. The spin is going to come up fairly early on. Rotation coming through from the Hoodwink as well. But Cloud, is he going to be able to play this one away? He's only got the two points here in the timber chain. But the Hoodwink isn't going to fully commit onto the rotation here as well. And yeah, not the greatest setup because if that acorn shot comes out, plants a tree, should be a quick will in death here. But in the mid lane trap, he's going to pop Nikki Cole, though, level six. If he needs to get himself away, he does have that rolling thunder. Chase on Chira Jr. has that slow back line. So, well, they might be able to find the bushwhack comes out into the line. Line is he going to be able to get himself away from this one? Not with the two support stacking up like this. He does get a double. 
double earth spike though. Roman Thunder comes out on the back lines. The RP it gets committed. Do they get the kill here onto the TA? TA a little bit too far forward. Has those refraction charges. One oh, second no, up onto this you. one. The haze gets picked up on Nikki Cool. Nikki Cool trying to get this chase down. They do have that stack up. It does get the kill on Sweden Strong off camera because of course he does. As a hell scream turning this one around here. Respect. They're gonna be able to get the nightmare onto the TA. Cliff comes out. Power shot through now. Mankushi gonna get involved. I think this one the focus fire. It is enough to get both supports on the side of Namiga. That's honestly uh, quite a good end result for Klim Sandwich here because yeah. they dove very deep. They dove all the way past the tier one. The supports were coming in from the flank, but their rotation out through the right side. And the fact that this Phoenix does not actually get caught in the uh, in the reverse priority, that means a lot. And they're, mm -hmm. they're not going to let up the tier now. Nikki Cole has just spent his Rolling Thunder for not too much in return. So Chiara Jr. would love to get some more hits in on this middle tower. Yeah, just watch it as well. The, the Phoenix is only level 4, so there's not going to be any supernovas. Ake getting close. I wonder if they give him the lane for just a little bit here. Well, maybe he doesn't even want it. Is there is going to be the Earth Spike into the trap, into the Mana Drain slow. Throws out that Nightmare, but Chiara Jr. just waits it out here. He's going to be able to get... Sure, he gets this one. Just carry on chasing. Mm. Refraction charges are down, though. Sunray coming through. Chiara Jr. One more right click. Will be able to pick up the kill. Might even be able to go into Hellscream now as well. Slowed down by the trap. And no points into the scurry. But Hellscream just playing on the other side of the tower. Won't be engaged on just yet. Mm -hmm. But Ake's smiling just a little bit there. He wasted so <laughs> much time with just popping his wand at the last minute. Yeah. That's... Like uh, I say. A little, little bit of a misstep from Chira there. Like, you should be expecting that at this level. Yeah, Trap comes out, Hellscream, power shot's gonna be off the mark, can they get the lockdown, focus fire comes through, Hellscream just disappears, oh the shackle, it latches, they're gonna be able to come in with the hex now as well, into the earth spike, but do they have the damage to follow up, Nikki Cool, gonna be able to get himself out of the path of the power shot, didn't even need to spend the rolling thunder here, but he might just lose this tier 1 tower. Yeah, he gets forced back now, traps are in place behind the tower as well, this is a catapult coming up, Munkushi is here, Chira is here, this tower is surely gonna fall. Yeah, you can see the Klim Sainz stepping up now as well. Trap comes out, slowing down onto Aig. That power everybody. shot. Oh, God damn it. It takes about half his health here, Aig. Yeah, they are going to be able to clear this tier 1 tower here. And uh, Aig just has to be careful moving himself away. Only on, well, I mean, less than 1,000 health anyway. So that power shot it is pretty deadly to him at the minute. Yeah, and the most incredible thing about all of this is that Klim Sainz has been bringing only three heroes to this mid lane with, like, the Wind Ranger <laughs> popping in now and then. Um, and that means that the Timbersaw has just been free to rule over the top lane, where we said before, the Juggernaut has absolutely no shot at taking this man down. So they took two towers in that span of time. They got a ton more farm out of that. Mm -hmm. And all of those supports that Namiga kept rotating towards the mid lane, they are struggling on the level department right now as well. Yeah, not even uh, level six. I mean... Ake is close. He's got some stacks that he can hang around here too. I think both of them should be... Or maybe not Hellscream. Hellscream is fairly uh, lower in terms of on that level 5. But it is going to get him close. And Ake now will hit that level 6 at least. So his ultimate will be up. Now I have to confess that in the middle of all of that, I never even tracked where the Wisdom Runes were going. I can't tell you because they're already off the tracker. But I do believe it was both supports. You know, one support from each side that did pick them up. Mm. Just a little, little nip in. No contest this time because, of course, all of the contest was on that middle lane. Mm -hmm. And now we have got Namiga in a very awkward position where they are behind the levels, they are behind in farms, and they are lacking two towers, which means that if they want to crack a tower, it should be bought, and they are going to go for Monkushi right now. There is the Fiend's Grip. I think they're getting him. Yeah, Monkushi, the sharpshooter coming out from Hellscream, is going to be able to secure that kill. Great setup there as well. So the Bane this time was able to get the full Fiend's Grip off. Jump in from Zeneca, just setting up for this one. But they are going to be able to defend the tower here on the side of Klim Sanich. And mm -hmm. uh, the three heroes on the side of Amiga will just straight up back themselves away as soon as they see those TPs coming in. Exactly. And what they should be doing right now is immediately shove out the mid wave, push it up to the mid tower, make use of the fact that the Timbersaw is not yet there. Mm -hmm. But that's already hampered by the fact that Nikki Cool is on half HP. He picked <laughs> a fight with Chira, who's all the way up in his business. Yeah. And yeah, you're you're not getting towards that mid tower. And this is we're going to see them caught in this spiral for a while because they can't get their waves out without losing a ton of HP and 
that means in return that if you maybe force a TP rotation, you can't actually make use of it on another lane. Well, they might be able to go into Violent here now as well. They're going to be able to set up with their Earth Spike into the Shackles, into, well, every single bit of damage coming out from these three heroes here on the side of Klim Sanagen. The Juggernaut Violent, he just disappears. He goes bye-bye. Yeah. And I have to say, with the way that they've been carefully maneuvering their way through these first 10 minutes of the game, Klim Sanish, you said they were on a roll. I can see that. Yeah, they, they've just had some great time and some great um, game plans coming out. The aggression's been on point. Um, and this is, you know, it, it's going back to the, to the good old days of Eastern European Dota, where we just see mm -hmm. a lot of Divide Dota coming out. Um, the dive's coming through as well. Let's see what Ake's going to be able to do behind this tier one. Though the dive comes in. Cloud always going to be able to do pops that Nightmare, but always going to be able to really do the is die. And not even for a good mm -hmm. cause as well. The thing is that if you if you play that fight with say Nikki Cool in position with your Magnus in position, yeah. Yep, great RP comes out. They're gonna be able to clean up at least onto well they get two of them that both of the heroes control the into the <laughs> RP and they, yeah, they they get dragged back, but I I guess this is buying time for Chira Jr. to take down. No, he even just goes for the blink away. Won't be able to take that tier one tower at all. No, this was an unforced error. Like the reason why I wasn't even paying attention to that is because I didn't think they would make that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah. And now you're gonna get the tower. This this is actually I don't want to call this a disaster, but this is quite bad. Like you were going to take down the last tier one and really uh, solidify your map position. Oh and now no, the yeah, shackle! You have to go and force Violent. They do. They get the focus what? fire coming through. Cherry Jr. is gonna be able to jump back in with the blink dagger now as well. They get the hex over onto. Did they get the kill onto the pango as well? They do. He wasn't able to get that rolling thunder off. Great aggression coming out here from Klim Sanch. He's just immediately TPing everybody in, and the supernova even on the back lines being spent to make sure that they can secure those kills. Zeneca. He's gonna be slowed down by the traps. Jump in now as well. Timbersaw doing all of that damage, and then some. Cherry Jr. gets that's the cleanup. Great setup from everybody. And yeah, Klim Sanich, they chase, they know what they can push these, this aggression. And they get three, they get all three cores out of that. Yeah, that's that's huge. And I think Namiga underestimated here how important Klim Sanich thinks that bottom tower is. They were like, okay, you know, we win the fight, we get the tower in return now. Klim Sanich is like, no, that is our chokehold on you. Yeah. That we wanted to get all your tier ones down without any in return, and we're going to stay that way. And they have achieved that now with this very fast reaction and the other thing that you can really see there is that Namiga are very dependent on their ultimates in order to make the team fights happen you need the rolling thunder you need the reverse polarity to come out you need both of them to be decent and if you don't like the fact that you have so much easy to dispense physical damage over on the other side and the very low cooldowns of a timber saw they could just run you down yeah um i was watching as well the, the ta 15 minutes in straight up bought out the the shot so he's getting these silences. Just this is what he's doing. He's getting the silences off onto Nikki Cool, and Nikki Cool can't get any, can't swash buckle away, can't roll in thunder because he sounds out, and he's losing half his health just to the right clicks coming out on the TA after he does get trapped. Now, one of you guys really in a bit of a bind because I've been, we've been talking about the the mage layers, right? And it yeah. would have been, it would have done so much for them to especially get a lot of reduced damage uh, onto the timber saw. Reducing the damage of the lion would have been great, but Nikki Cool is currently dangling at the bottom of his cores, and he is not nearly at the mage layer yet. Where normally you can see that item coming out starting at like, you know, 17, 18 minutes if you're adding a really good one. Yeah, and it's, you know, like you say, he's got the Diffusal Blade. He even went in back for the Blightstone uh, for a little bit more, but he's just being harassed right out of this. And yeah, you've got, you've not got any magic reduction. So when the Timbersaw jumps in, pops that Veil, you are going to suffer. Exactly. You're going to suffer, so you can't group against that. But then if you split, they have the other two cores <laughs> that are going to be picking you off with single target physical damage. So it's, it's a rock and a hard place. Yeah, and if you do get separated out, it means that the Phoenix can jump in. Yo, he gets that supernova off, and you know, yeah. no one's going to hang around. If you're split up, nobody's going to try and hang around to, to right-click that down. So it just feels, I don't want to say like a free game for Klim Sanich, but they are at the minute in control, and it's going to be interesting yeah. to see how Namiga pull it back. 10k lead before 20 minutes. I will, yeah. I'll call it free. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm very happy doing that. Like They are completely in control, both on the map as well as in the net worth. There are so many items that Namiga needs to buy in order to oh. get look. themselves back into the game. Yeah, though I don't, I don't want to look Robin Hurts. <laughs> 
And it was just, again, lion hiding in the trees. He just waits. Cloud comes in as soon as Sweden Strong, excuse me, as soon as Nikki Cool shows, Sweden Strong is able to get that instant hex off. And it's just, it, that was rough, buddy. You know, he's mm -hmm. he is behind, like you say, in terms of cores. He, he's right down low, only the Magnus below him in terms of, like, that core net worth. And, uh, yeah, how do you expect... Namiga to get back into this game. What's the game plan for them? What style do they have to play to to make this uh, an even game? I guess they're going to have to try to keep some form of vision out on the map so that they can anticipate the moves of Klimsanich and yeah. their capability of fighting reactively is really good. If they have vision, these heroes will absolutely destroy you. Right? You can get phenomenal rolling thunders, amazing RPs, hoodwink. Uh, the amount of damage that this hero can pump out as long as she knows where you are is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but you just need either Klim Sanish to make a mistake and, you know, show too many of them, dive too deep into vision, etc. Or alternatively, you need somebody to get caught uh, <laughs> deliberately. And I'm looking at Ike here. Like, the last time that they were grouping for a possible move around this, uh, this Observer Ward in their own triangle, uh, near their ancients is I saw Ike all the way in the back and I'm like I don't I don't think you can be there my man somebody needs to attract the attention somebody needs to give the vision somebody needs to get the the overreaction out of Pim Sanage where you know they maybe put both the Wind Ranger as well as the TA on the same target that would be ideal yeah but that doesn't happen if you're not giving them a target to do that on yeah and uh, like I said I just <laughs> I don't want to keep harping on about it, but I just don't. I don't like the Bane as a support. You know, um, it, well, it doesn't feel good to me. You know, where we're seeing like the uh, it does nothing right now. No, and hopefully, I mean, if it does, I mean, item wise as well, to make that ultimate effective, you know, you've got to be looking into the Ag Scepter, which is a big investment for a position five. Otherwise, he is like you say, he's at threat of being caught out even by something like a TA trap that's just going to instantly cancel that off. So, you know, cannon fodder. Cannon fodder <laughs> is a noble, underutilized role. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, like, Otomo complains when I say support to the 2B cannon fodder, you know, the other to give up their lives in um, for, for the cause. He says that's just, uh, it's a classist attitude, and I shouldn't have that. You know, I should respect <laughs> the supports. Um, but... Just looking at heroes that do that, I mean, we've seen the, or at least I've seen the Venge the past few days coming out that yeah. looks so much better on that role, and I don't even think it was ban out as well. No, I don't think so either. She was uh, maybe even unjustly ignored. Fact is, though, that she is, um, compared to a Bane, a little light on the lockdown and yeah. very much physical damage once again. You don't, you don't want to put all of your eggs in the physical damage basket, even though we do have two lineups here that <laughs> clearly have more eggs in that basket than in the other one. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, fair enough that if that's not how they want to play it, I, yeah, just, I, I thought it would have been a good hero. And yeah, yeah like I say... As a hero, she better. <laughs> yeah, so... Just How's the items? I'm just looking. Sorry, I'm just looking through the items here as well. Magnus, he does have the blink, so not going into the harpoon. No Vlad, uh, no veil for himself. Just going straight into the, to the orchid, coming yeah, out for him. It's, and he's had a bit of a sad game, hasn't he? Because that yeah. blink dagger has been on him for a long time, and he got the one RP where uh, at Klimsanich's too deep dive near the. Uh, what, what what is that called again? The the giant skeleton. The uh, giant skeleton. Yeah. I, I can't okay. click it. Yeah, so just sure. the the fallen titan or some something fallen titan daft like that. I I don't know, my dude. Sure, fallen titan. But that's that's it, and we haven't seen any use out of that blink dagger. And mm -hmm. I feel like in general they should have been prioritizing the farm of somebody on a team much harder and like really try and make place with the other ones. But as yeah. it is, all three cores have just been sort of hoping for their next item and be like, hey. Uh, you know what would be cool? If any of the other guys die, that would be neat. Well, oh, Violent's going to be able to go for the spin TP, so he's not going to die. Nikki Cool, can he get himself out? Just the instant sounds coming through. Was that follow coming through, out from the line on the other side? Into the Earth Spike, and Nikki Cool is dead. So, not going great for him. And, yeah, I would have thought as soon as you saw the Kira Jr. aggression onto the Juggernaut, just rolling Thunder away. J j just leave. Mm -hmm. But Yeah. yeah. I can see him keeping the Rolling Thunder, though, because that's one of their two ways to win a teamfight at yeah. all at the moment. It's 
Rolling Thunder is a special kind of bullshit, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, we're going to see Mankushi just pushing this top lane now as well. Uh, Glim is up for the Wind Ranger, so he's going to have that extra lockdown on top of the Shackles. Coming through onto this tier 2, even the Focus Fire being committed to the tier 2 tower here. Going to be able to chunk through this fairly quickly. Eight to step up, but yeah, Mankushi quick with the back away. We'll see if they are going to be able to try and get aggressive here onto 8, because there's going to be the dive in. Nightmare comes out now. Respect, Nightmare going to trade it off. And there's going to be the Glemner coming out here onto the power shot for 8. Does he get himself away from this one? Sunray coming through. No mobility on the hero. Doesn't look like it. That was very important though, like you can see him there stepping up, dying, you think like, okay, well he wasted a bit of time. Yeah, the important part is that he was wasting that time while Hellscream was actually hitting Pop Tower. Mm -hmm. So, it, and this this is how you're gonna have to do it now. You have to just keep him busy, killing one of you while you're somewhere, somehow, sneaking your arm out of the grip of the python <laughs> and like, wrestling through. Because this, this python is all but done squeezing. Yeah, um, and we'll see maybe another not. I, I don't. I'm not in the squeeze. I don't know another spin in the squeeze. Another. Mm. I, I I I I can't follow up on your. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that's okay. Uh, but they are going to be able to try and go for that dive in now. So do they get the lockdown? They're going to be able to turn this around. Oh, Munkushi coming in with the Glaipnir. You've got that three man drain coming out, and they're just going to be able to clean up everybody. The finger of death wow. comes out and gets on to Nikki Cool. Nikki Cool is gone violent now once again. Well, he's going to try and commit the Omni Slash, but these are the two biggest, tankiest heroes in the game. They just sit together. They get the RP out, but that is going to be the Aegis being popped here from the TA. Can they get any more from this? Because they've already got the kill onto Violent. Sweden Strong just stands his ground. Will go down in the end, though, and they get the kill onto four. Are they going to be able to make a full five-man wipe? Yeah. Lockdown Glepnir. Nightmare. It's only going to keep him alive for so long. And this is going to be a nightmare here for the side of Namiga. They get cleaned up. It opens up their tier three towers. And I don't think mm -hmm. Klim Sanich are going to stop. No, the Python is uh, is unhinging its jaw right now. <laughs> and this is... Uh, GG. Yeah, there we go. GG. Swallowed whole. So... 20 to 8 at 24 minutes in a 21k net worth lead here. Clem Sarch, nearly 1k net worth per minute in this game. And yeah, just keeping up that aggression. So Namiga, it was it was rough. It was a rough first game, but how do you think they pull it back in game number two? You know, how do they need to play to get themselves on par with Clem Sarch? I definitely think that they underestimate.